Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on part three of our patchwork jumper slash sweater slash pullover, whatever you want to call it. And what you will have at the end of part three is one set of your work complete and then I ask you to head off on your own and do the second set. For this part, you will need your amounts of yarns. You'll need all the colors that you're going to use in your stash. Or if you're working with more than 10 colors, then you'll need only 10 colors worth for today's um, tutorial. All right. So first thing I want you to do is make sure you have ample amount of yarn. Yeah. Uh, you will also need your hook that you're going to create your blocks with. Now I'm using five millimeter hook. Uh, make sure you did your swatch, your gauge swatch before continuing. Yeah, but for me, I'm using the five millimeter hook. I'm working with the large size for my piece, but all other sizes will actually be written up on the screen for you to have a look at. So you're not going to miss out. Yeah, you will need your sewing weaving needle, any needle. I've just got the one, the little darning one, but you can use a normal sewing one. Now I do show you how to use these little bobbins if you have them. Don't stress if you don't have them. If you look carefully at my work, I'm not using bobbins, but I am carrying up the yarn and I show you how to make sure you don't get all tangled up and everything as well. All right, you'll also need your scissors. You'll need two stitch markers, definitely need those stitch markers, yeah? And you'll need patience. <laughs> I do this tutorial does go for a long time but I'm trying very hard to be nice and thorough for you for these two sets after this the rest of our tutorials will go a lot quicker it's just because I wanted to make sure that you knew what you were doing um, along here that's the inside of our work and let's get a close-up of it which you can see some carrying up but very, very minimal on the inside of your jumper. No one's going to see it, yeah? But on the outside, you don't see any carrying up. How gorgeous does it look? All right, I'm not going to talk anymore because, again, this tutorial does go for a long time. But these are the sort of things that you will need for this particular uh, tutorial. If you haven't started our ribbing yet, I've left a link to the ribbing in the description box down below. In the description box, I've also left the actual playlist to the whole jumper where you've got your swatch, your gauge swatch and everything else in that playlist as well. All right, thank you very much for joining me and good luck creating part three of your patchwork jumper slash sweater. All righty guys, before we start anything, I want to have a quick discussion about bobbins. Now this is not necessary. This is just if you have these things. Now these things kind of look like something like that. And it's got like a little split up the top. Looks like it's broken, but it's not. Because what these are used for is, and I'll show you, you grab your yarn, and you can do it either way. You can just pop it through that little slip there. Yeah. Actually, no, that's not the way to do it. This is the way to do it. You still pop it through the little um, thing there. Yeah. And then you just wrap your guy over like that you can do it the other way it doesn't really matter now it's gone the wrong way <laughs> yeah, it's going the wrong way but you can do it either way um, that you want yeah so there you go and what you're doing is you're winding 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 let's pretend like we've wound I don't know 15 grams 20 grams whatever these smaller ones take a lot less so just be weary if you don't have these you can make a little cardboard with a little, um, the cardboard should look like that, yeah? And if you don't have these, you can do exactly what I'm doing, where everything is just hanging off your work. And I'll tell you how to detangle as we go along. When you're doing work like this, this turning over backward and forward can become a little tangled, which is why a lot of people use these. Now, let's just say for argument's sake, that's the colour we're using, which looks like the colour and it actually is. Once we finish using that colour, we grab this little guy. Then we grab a peg, which I misplaced. Here we go. And you just peg it to your piece. 
So what you do, you're actually winding it up every time you use it. Let's just pretend like it's attached and it's wound up and it's so stuck together like that you can't move it. You pop your little peg on any place you like. Then you flip your work and everything stays together. When you're ready to, do, to use it again, you take that undone, unravel a little bit and start working along there. That is only if you have bobbins. Now, I'm not using bobbins because I want you guys to see uh, what it would be like if you didn't have bobbins, okay? Because not everyone has them, or well, not everyone can afford them, or not everyone just has them in the house, and no one, these are sort of things you go out and buy, yeah? So let's just say you don't have your bobbins. We are going to start making this part here, right here now, without bobbins. Alrighty, now that we've worked out our bobbins, let's work out exactly where I have left you off last week. Alright, what I asked you to do was to do the ribbing of your choice. Now these were the sizes right here, there we go again. These were the sizes of the ribbing that you would have completed. Now just check those sizes again, forget about small, extra small, large, medium, focus on that chest measurement. All right, really, really important to focus on that chest measurement. Okay, so that's where I left you there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start our row of blocks. Yeah, now you would have done your ribbing in either. Let's get a nice close up. Either the five millimeter hook or the 4.5, whichever hooks you were using. Now I'm using the five millimeter hook for my blocks here, yeah, for my whole jumper. But for this ribbing, I used a 4.5. And all that's done is just tightened my work a little bit, giving me a little bit more of a, I don't know, tighter look on the ribbing than the rest of your jumper. And it saves you having to do uh, less rows and then ending up with two or three stitches in the row, which is what you'll do for your sleeve anyway, but doesn't matter. Um, but for the waist, I didn't want to do that, all right? So what we're going to do, now I asked you not to uh, cast off your main color. If you're wanting to use the main color as your first block, like I did right here. Oops, <laughs> bring that out again. Hello, there's my first block. And you can see the thread was attached over here on the left-hand side for me. Uh, over here, I had my first block right there and I came across this way and then changed to the gray. So I didn't cut my red. Having said that, um, if you don't want to use the red, by all means, start with your new color. Now your new color will be something like this, all right? Let's say you didn't want to use the red. What you needed to do oh, is do the very last stitch. Oh, let's finish that off. That was the last single crochet right there. Pull your loop through, hold it there. This is if you didn't want to use the red. So you grab your next colour, which whatever that is. Let's just try grey for a moment. Pull the grey through, like so. Grab the tail end of your grey and your red at the back. And your working end should be right there. Chain one. And you're going to start a half double crochet, which is yarn over your hook, or a half treble in the UK. This is uh, US terminology at the moment. So half double crochet in the same stitch that you are in. Yeah. So straight into that stitch right there is one half double crochet. I'm telling a lie. Let's take that back. Let's take that back. Straight into the stitch that you're in is one half double crochet. And then you are doing a half double crochet in every ridge, like that. I'm going to show you again in a minute. And every little indent or valley, if you will. All right. So I'm going to show you again, but not casting off my red because I want to keep my red. So if you didn't get all that first time, listen in now and we'll do it again, except in the red. So your final stitch would have been your single crochet and then you would have chained one. Yep. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to work along the sides of the ribbing now. I should say side, not sides. Yeah. So we're going to work along the side of the ribbing. Okay. And we're going to be doing half double crochets in every stitch you come to. 
all right so yarn over your hook in the very first stitch and that can be right there in that stitch in that stitch right there that you are in pop your hook in pull a loop through like so without splitting the yarn three loops on your hook one two three yarn over pull through all three loops that is a half double crochet in the US terminology and a half treble in the UK terminology all right you need to grab a stitch marker and I've split this yarn so much but anyway grab the stitch marker and pop it through the top two loops of your piece which I've split but anyway we'll talk about that later and you need to do the amount of half double crochets across here or half trebles for UK to the amount of uh, stitches that you need now here's the amount of stitches across you need for your size just do one stitch less uh, we're going to do it together anyways do one stitch less and at the end of this color combination I'll show you how to change colors all right so have a look at that color combination there and the amount you need for your size for the first color and we'll talk about the rest later all right so we've done one everyone's done one yarn over your hook you're going into the very next space now if you stretch your work you will find each space but if you're not sure all you have to remember to do is put a half double in the ridge and a half double in the indented section or the valley if you will so half one half two half three and so on all right we've already done one so we're going straight in don't forget to yarn over your hook here yeah? we're going straight into the stitch or the actual space pull a loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through three loops on your hook and that's the second one and into the indented space that's your third stitch into the ridge space that's your fourth and so on all right so do the amount of stitches across there they are again that you need for your size but make one less so we've done one two three four and off we go five now if you're doing the large like me you need 17 across but we're only doing 16 because we're on the 17th we're going to uh, change our color combination and I haven't been counting <laughs> <laughs> because I've been talking here we go uh, one two three four five six by the way you are counting these little V's yeah one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and off we go eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen now I'm supposed to do 17 across. Right? But I've only done 16. Now if I'm not sure, I'll count them. And that's the V's. You're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 is the stitch that you are in. Now we're going to do the 17th stitch but we're going to get halfway through it and grab our next color now that depending on what you're using i'm using a uh, gray okay so let me grab the gray all right so just pop the gray in front of you or whatever color you're using you're going to start your half double with your color that you're using now so pop your hook in the next stitch pull a loop through three loops on your hook drop your red into the fingers into the back of the oh, wrong way Back of the fingers there so no matter which way you're holding it left or right just pop your thread behind you yeah now grabbing the gray popping it over your hook like so and pull the loop through so you completed your V right there with the red using the gray all right now what I want you to do is grab the tail of the gray a little bit fiddly grab the tail of the gray and your red and pop them in your hand then you can start your very next stitch using the gray now we are already in this let's get a clearer shot here I think that would be better if we're nice and clear we are already in that stitch there yeah so we want to get into that stitch 
depending on your size, but I'm on a ridged stitch. So yarn over my hook, into the stitch, pull a loop through, still holding those threads. Now hold them with your other hand, let go and finish off your grey. And there you go. This might come a little bit loose and I'll show you what to do with that later. Yeah, but in the meantime, there's your number count again there, right there. I want you to actually do your numbers across again, minus one. Yeah, so we've done one and I'm going to do another 15 to make it 16 across for now. Even though I need 17, we're going to finish the last stitch off with the next colour. So one, two, three, four and five and off we go. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. All right. So if you're not sure, count your stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 is your last stitch that you did. Yeah. Now, what we want to do is change to our very next colour. What is the very next colour I hear you ask? Mine is pink. Now, I'm not sure what yours is. Okay, remember, you are not doing 16 if you are other sizes. There's the sizes. These are the numbers you're doing. Yeah, even though you're, we're doing one less. <laughs> Hope I haven't confused you too much there. We're going to complete our 17th stitch by, and let's get a close up if you're doing the large, yarn over your hook into the very next stitch, pull a loop through, hold it there. Yeah, popping your tail in your the back of your fingers there, grabbing your new colour, and... Mm, Pop it over your hook and pull your loop through like that. You want to grab your tail of the pink and your grey, pop them in your hands at the back and start your very next stitch. Not in the one that we're in, but in the very next space. And you can see the spaces if you really give them a stretch, yeah? So start it right in the very next one, and there's your one, yeah? Two, three, and I'm just going to move all this out the way so you can see, and off we go doing the rest of your pink. Five, is that five? One, two, three, four, five, yep. Six. Oh, I've just split my yarn, hello. Mm. Seven, eight, nine, oh, nine. I hope it's not uh, too noisy here for you guys. I've got the air conditioning on. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I don't want to miss any stitches. And 16. Right, now don't forget these are your sizes, remember, yeah? Stick to your sizes and do one less for your size, all right? Because we're going to complete the next one now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We're going to start our very next stitch, pulling a loop through, grabbing your next colour. In my case, it's the green. You've got all caught up, as you do. Okay, so what are we doing? We're popping the pink in the back of our hand there, yeah? grabbing your green, popping it over the hook and just pulling it through like so. Yeah. Then once again, what are you going to do? You're going to grab the tail of your green and your pink, pop it in your hand like so. Up and down, up and down. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm trying to make it thorough for you. Yeah. Yarn over your hook. And you're going to pop your hook in the very next stitch, doing your 16 across if you're a large. And there's the, the amount you need to do for yours across. Yes, right there. 
chloride. So I'm going to do my 16. One, two, three. Everybody's saying yes, it's usually 17. What's going on? Once again, we are doing one less. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15 and 16. Now for me, this is my final color change. If you are if you have six colors or seven colors at the end, you need to add your very next color or next two colors. But for me, that's my final color and that color will be koala or brown, whichever you want to call it. All right. So, we're going to do Move everything out the way so things don't blur for you. Okay, you're going to do what? You're going to start your next stitch, pop it into the space, pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, pop your tail in your fingers at the back, grabbing your new colour, which for me is the bone, brown, koala, whatever you want to call it, pull the loop through. And once again, you are grabbing the tail of the brown and your green at the back of your work and hold it nice and tightly so it doesn't loosen up on you. And again, you are doing your half double crochets across. And I'm going to show you what happens when it loosens up a little, yeah? All the way and off we go. Now I know for a fact it's going to be 17 across, but I'm going to count anyway. Now this is the section, if it's your last colour like mine, you don't need to change colours, you just need to do your 17 across, yeah? Almost there. Alright, and I'll explain when we get closer about the very last stitch. All right, so what we have here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. But it looks like we have two rows here. We actually don't. One is the row and one is the chain stitch. So either, I should have mentioned it earlier, you could have started this stitch one over and then put two in here or you could do what I'm doing which I think is almost the same is just popping one in there grabbing your tail end if your tail end is here which it should be for almost everyone yeah if you haven't got the tail end here don't worry about it but grabbing your tail end popping it at the back and just crochet your half double crochet over it like so don't crochet your your hair in it like I just did <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that has now finished your row and what you have is that and what you have if you're anything like me Is that so what you want to do now if you didn't use your bobbins Say if you used your bobbin what you probably should have done and where is it? I've got the wrong one there not that one if you used your bobbin after every color you should have wound up your bobbin like so grabbed your peg and pegged it to it so when you are ready to flip your work all you had to do is go like that and it's done and all these tails would not be tangled but if you're not using your bobbin if you're like me and not using bobbins then this is what I would like for you to do all right let's move all this out the way for now yeah. even the hook everything grab your work yeah and detangle everything let's go back to the way it was was it this way no it was the other way sorry I actually know what flip your work if you like you can flip it if not this is what I I used to do when I worked with this sort of work I wound up my ball and popped it on the piece yeah went to the next color wound this guy up and popped it on my piece don't worry about the, what's there just wanted to show you what we're doing wound this guy up 
popped it there. And the same with the other ones. Let's just pretend I did. Yep. Then what I used to do is just turn it around like that. Sounds silly, but believe it or not, it works. Lifted the back guy up, passed him over and started working along here. Now, this is just one way of doing it. And if that doesn't work, just lift it up a little bit so you can have a look. You can always straighten everything up. What was next to green? Straighten it all up. And there you go. I'm sorry, I'm trying to lift it so you can see. And so now you're ready to start your very next row. But I'm not going to worry. I just wanted to show you for your benefit. All right. Now, this piece here, so you know this, is a two row repeat. We're going to start our very first row and I've taken my stitches undone so I'm going to have to do them again, just the last ones. Um, you're going to start your first repeat row. So I'm hoping that's making sense for you. I'm just going to fix up those stitches that I just lost. By the way guys, when you are um, working and you want to move your work around, pop a stitch marker in there so when you're moving your work, your piece doesn't come undone like mine just did, yeah? All right, when you got to the end of the row, I don't know if I mentioned it before, you do your half double crochet, then you chain one and turn your work, all right? Now you can turn the work the way you want, it doesn't matter. You could turn it like you're turning the page in a book. You can, doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way. Of doing this part yeah all right so now what you're going to do is work with these colors right here you really don't need to know the numbers anymore however just another look right there this is the amount of stitches that you need to have across per color right we're going to start with the color that we've already got in hand which is fantastic because it's already there and you're going to do your half double in every stitch across or half treble for UK terminology, yeah? Pop your hook in, pull a loop through, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook like so, grabbing a stitch marker and pop it there. Then yarn over your hook into your very next stitch and pulling your loop through your three like normal. If you don't want to count, then by all means don't count Count when you get to the end of this colour combination, which is what I'm going to do for today. Normally I count each stitch as I go because there are only a certain amount of stitches per colour. Yeah, But for me, I'm just going to count this at the end of this colour set on purpose so you guys can actually uh, see where we're at. Now remember, I'm doing the large, so I'll be doing... 17 stitches across but I'm only doing 16 for now so we can do the last color by changing the colors again all right I'm on my second last stitch and I'm going to count the stitches for you so you can see what I've done I've done uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and 16 I've got one stitch left now this row that we're doing now is the trickiest row of your whole piece through this tutorial today all right this is the trickiest row so every second row you'll have a little tricky row like this all right but for now just grabbing your tail ends of your work which is just a tail end of that little beige and keeping it there for now it doesn't really matter we're going to do it again later but yarn over your hook you're going to pop your hook in that stitch now let's say for argument's sake that you let yours go a little loose and it looks like that just gently give it a tug and make it sit into place where it's gentle gently tugged and not pulled real tight yeah so you gently give it a tug yarn over your hook start your stitch pull a loop through like so three loops on your hook now here's where the trickiness happens this one here is the wrong side of your work. You'll know where it is because that's where your tails will be. Yeah, You grab your tail, your working yarn, you're passing it forward into your thumb, under your thumb, pass your tail under your thumb, pick up your new colour. So I hope that made sense. Yeah. All you have to remember is to pass the main colour that you just finished and pop it under your thumb. Grab your new colour 
hook over the hook I should say and just pull it through the three loops on your hook don't let go of that old color yeah hold it there you now officially have one of these little loops sitting right there don't leave it too loose and don't pull it too tight or the next stitch is not going to work so yarn over your hook you're going to pop your I've still got my work there but I can let go now when I'm doing this part yeah so pop your hook under that loop that you just made and right into the very first stitch now the very first stitch you'll see the letter V we'll do it better in the next color because green's a bit difficult to see online but you pop your hook in you pull a loop through the loop through through your stitch and through that little loop that you made so your loop is under your work there Yarn over your hook and pull a loop through all three loops on your hook. And you changed your colour. Now, if this is really dangling loose, take it undone and do this stitch again. If it's too tight, give it a bit of a gentle tug because you don't want it too tight either. If you want to see if you did it right, turn it over and you'll have a little look like that. That's normal. That clears up as you go along. All right. So that's that. I'm going to show you again because it was a very tricky stitch. So let's pretend that you haven't done it yet. Yarn over your hook into the stitch, pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, pass your brown forward, pass your tail forward, making sure it's tight enough, yeah. Grabbing your new colour over the hook, pull it through the three loops on your hook, yarn over under that loop that you just created into the stitch pull a loop through the stitch and through that loop that you created three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops now i hope that was explained well um, we're going to do it again with the pink in a minute anyways and you'll be able to see that a little better so the best part is guys that was the difficult part the rest is easy. You're doing your half doubles in every stitch. Now, if you want to know exactly where I'm going, you're facing your work towards you. You've got yarn over your hook, face it towards you, and that's where you're going. Your two little V on top there. Yeah. Don't do it this way, where a lot of people might do it. In front, don't do it in front. Yeah. You're pulling it towards you, and that's the stitch you're going into. Yeah. I hope that makes sense there. But a half double or half treble in the UK terminology is pretty basic and it works really well for this pattern, okay? Some people like to use it in grafgans as well. Ooh, I quiver when I say grafgan. Um, but uh, I find half double a little too thick for grafgan, but it works well in patchwork. It really does, yeah? You'll also need to know how to do a double crochet and a single crochet uh, but not for this tutorial, but this part in the next part of um, the tutorial, which will be part four. Today is part three. And I'm on my second last stitch, which I've completed. Count your stitches, make sure they're correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen for the large, because we're going to do the seventeenth now. All right. Yarn over the hook again exactly what we did before into the stitch pull a loop through hold it there i'm finding this a little loose so i'm going to get my green and just give it a gentle tug and it closes it up a little bit pop it over there pop the other rest of the green over there the tail and the working yarn of the green grab your new color over your hook pull a loop through like so now this is where you'll be able to see your color better Yarn over your hook, you can see that little loop better. Pop your hook under the loop and into your first stitch. Make sure you're not missing that first stitch. Pull a loop through like normal, through the loop, and you've got your three loops. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, straight into the very next stitch with your half double. It is the trickiest part of this tutorial seriously the rest is easy your next row I think is extremely easy yeah it's the same as doing a normal half double row except you don't have to worry about pulling 
loops through and things like that. You just pick up your yarn and, and start. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but for now, just keep doing your stitches all the way across and mine has tangled up. So give me one moment. All right, now the reason that got tangled up is yours truly has already done this tutorial before, but guess what? I forgot to press record. <laughs> so I have to rewind my yarn again, as you do. <laughs> a little bit of trivia there about me. <laughs> hey, sometimes we mess up. All right, I'll bring that out a bit so it's not too close. Making sure you are using the amount across that you used. Okay. For me it's 17, but again, we're doing one less. All right, so if you're doing large like me, you're lucky, you just have to do what I'm doing. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. All right, once again. Now I've noticed this is a bit loose. I'm just going to give it a gentle tug, both of them. Yep. Yarn over our hook, start the stitch. Complete it. No, don't complete it. <laughs> Pull a loop through. <laughs> Come on, Mary, you can do this. Pass your thread forward. Pass your tail forward. You're holding on to everything except the grey. Pick up your grey over your hook. Pull it through the three loops. Yarn over your hook. Under your grey loop. And into the first grey stitch. Pull a loop through the stitch and through the loop. Three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Now, if you haven't practiced this kind of stitch before, here's a little beanie right here. How gorgeous is that? If you did that beanie, then this should be easy to do. We have that beanie here on the channel. I've left a link to the beanie in the description box down below. Very first link you see. And you can have a play with this stitch um, with the first color set of the beanie. But in the meantime, you're here, so you don't need to play with it. You can just do it <laughs> while you're here. Yeah. Once again, uh, half double or half treble UK in every stitch all the way across until you get to your second last stitch, whichever number that may be for you. Oops. And we're almost done with the second row, guys, so get excited, yeah? And yet this is the first row repeat. So I say that because when I do two rows, I'm going to let you head off on your own and do the rest yourself. What they're saying? What? Yeah. You can just re-watch what we've done here and it'll help you out. I'll have a little timestamp ready for you in a minute. So it'll tell you exactly where to go back to watch. All right. So I've done my 16, but I'm going to count anyway. 1, 2, hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. All right, I'm going to do my 17th stitch. That's not so loose, so I'm just going to continue in, pop the hook in, pull a loop through once again, passing the grey forward, passing the tail forward, holding it down with your thumb, Grabbing your new colour, which in my case is the red. Yarn over your hook. Pull a loop through like normal. Yarn over under the red. Might be hard to see because it's the same colour. And into your red stitch. Pull a loop through all of it. Three loops. Yarn over three. And guess what? You have done your colours across. Now, for those of you who have six colours or seven colours, you keep going with your colour change. For the rest of us, let's just do our stitches all the way across. If you've done your count right, you should have, for the large, 17 uh, stitches in total per colour. All right, in a minute I'll pop all that information up again for you, so you can have a look-see for the rest of the sizes, okay? Nearly there, whoops, almost. Oh, we were almost there until I made a mistake. <laughs> Third last stitch, and I can see that stitch so split there. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out in a minute. I've got a second last stitch. All right, 
So count your stitches 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and I have one left. It's only split a little bit, but you know, it's split. <laughs> what I want you to do is pop your half double crochet, your last one, in the very last stitch, and that's the two loops on top. Pull a loop through, yarn over, and complete your stitch. Chain one whenever you complete a stitch at the end of the row chain one it does not act as a stitch it's just to keep it all into place at the end of the row what you have now is let's bring it down that all right you should all have this amount here these are the amounts you should have per color all right each color should have those amount amounts there for your size mine is the large so i should have 17 per color yeah so what we're going to do now is we're going to focus on um we're not going to focus on the tails yet and i'll explain that to you in the next scene but we are going to focus on making sure that our yarn is not tangled so wind your yarn up place it where it should be okay it should be per color we're going to do this together so that you know what you're doing for the rest of you who still need to do your colors pause the video here and meet us back here in a moment yeah but everyone else keep winding up your yarn popping it on your little piece now i'm going to show you i don't know how far out i am i'm just going to bring that camera up a little bit so you can see and that's where it is on the piece now i'm sorry i'm going to hold the camera with my hand i'm just going to turn the piece around like so I wanted you to see it so my camera's all over the place yeah so now grabbing each color and just bringing it forward just means you have to unwind again a little bit don't throw it like that <laughs> just means you may have to unwind again yeah yep yep and just flip your yarn your piece like that you now are have all your yarns in place, move each colour out the way, like so, like so. And you're going to start right here for your next row, yeah? All right, so everybody should be here now, yes? We're going to start with our very first colour, which is the red for me. So we have done two rows. That was your first repeat row. This is your second repeat row. This one is simple. The only thing you need to watch out for are those tails. And I'll talk about those tails at the end of this row so you understand. But for now, we're going to focus on just doing the row. Yarn over your hook, easy. Pop your hook in uh, like normal and do your stitch. Grab your stitch marker and pop it in your stitch like so. And off you go doing your 16 or whatever number you have in my case it's 16 across and the 17th will be done uh, at the end when we change our color all right here we go we're almost there almost there I'm on my second last stitch once again if you don't trust your count count it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen i have one more stitch to go which i'm going to do right here get how easy this one is all you're doing is yarn over your hook popping your hook in the stitch pull a loop through like normal yeah grabbing the tail you're working in sorry pop it in the back of your hand like you did before but at the back yeah then you grab the tail of the gray as well popping it at the back now you have just the working end of your gray all you're doing here is popping it over the hook pulling it through yarn over into your very next stitch now i don't know if that came out of frame so i'm going to do that again i think it did come out of frame there i do apologize so sit forward mary and get it right <laughs> <laughs> yarn over pop your hook in pull a loop through pop the red at the back pop the tail you won't need to do it all the time but just for this row here at the back 
Then you grab your working end, sorry about the puppy guys, a bit excited, and you pull the loop through like so. All right, so now this is an easy bit. Yarn over your hook in your stitch and do your half double crochets or half dribbles UK all the way across. I told you this row was a lot easier. It is so much easier. So first row, a little bit difficult, second row, easier. Now the thing is you've got to remember is you have to remember to um, hold your tails at the back because otherwise they may get caught up in your crochet and you don't want that. That's not going to happen all the time, but it will for these two rows that we've just completed. Later I'll tell you what you can do with your tails before we continue. And we're nearly there to the next colour. Alright, which is second last stitch, which is right there. Once again, counting your stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. And again, what are you going to do? You're going to pop your hook in, pull a loop through like normal, hold your grey at the back. Grab your little pink, where's the pink tail? At the back, grab your pink here, pulling it through like so. You can let go of everything now if you like, and just do your normal half double crochets all the way across your piece. It's super duper easy this row, remembering to hold all the tails at the back. When you do the next row, you're holding all the tails in the front. All right, so I hope this is making sense. Yeah, I'm going really fast because I want you to be able to get to um, the end of this row and then we'll have a chat about what we're going to do next. What they're saying, what? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're nearly there, nearly there. I'm splitting the yarn, I'm doing well today. This pink yarn, because I've overworked with it, guys, because I've already done this once before. <laughs> I've done it once before. <laughs> I didn't press record, <laughs> as you do. All right, when you get to the end of your row, count your pieces, I mean your stitches. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now, if you trust yourself, you don't need to count. Or if you're counting as you go along, even better, okay? But you're strong. I make too many mistakes, so it's only because I'm rushing. Pop your hook in your stitch, start your stitch, and what are you going to do? Tail in the hand, tail in the hand, the working yarn of your new colour. Pull it through the loop of your hooks, of the loop. Let's try it again, through the loops on your hook, yarn over into your very next stitch now i know this tutorial is going to go a long time only because i'm trying to be thorough the only thing you don't have to watch me doing are these little half doubles all the way across um you don't need to watch me do that but i'm showing you anyway <laughs> well you don't need to see me do it i'll be really fast she says as she's caught up so as you're working guys move your threads out the way because otherwise you're going to get caught up like me, <laughs> like I have already. And you need to fix your threads up on every row. I can't stress that enough, guys, especially if you're not using bobbins, like I showed you before. Uh, you need to fix your threads up uh, at every row. Yeah, oh, I'm almost there, almost there. Now, it is a little fiddly, the jumper, but, you know, beauty is pain, guys. <laughs> you like that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Beauty is pain. Mm, it is. Um, she's singing now. We're in trouble. All right. Yarn over the hook into your next stitch. Mine's a little tight there, which is good. Pull a loop through, but we don't want it too tight, yeah? Yarn in the back of your hand there the tail end of your new colour in the back of your hand. You can probably move your colours, your yarns out the way, which I didn't do before, which I should have, because I've tangled up my yarn. So there we go. Oh, look at that. 
don't worry. You don't need to worry about that. I'll fix that up off air later. <laughs> All right. So grabbing your working end, pulling it through like so, yarn over into your very next stitch. Notice how I am still pulling it forward like that. Try not to forget that first stitch because you will be one stitch short. Truly you will. All right, so off we go and finish off this set. Now for me, this is the last set of the row, okay? For uh, the other sizes, you need to do six sets and you need to do seven sets for the small, medium and large. You guys are like me, okay? You're not like me, but <laughs> your stitch count is different. You just have the five groups across, five sets of colors, okay? So yeah, all good. So this was the easiest row and you have completed, not yet, You have completed your two row, chain one at the end of your row. I'm going to pop my stitch marker in there so you can, uh, we can talk. You can pop your stitch marker in your little loop, just so you don't lose it for now. And we'll have a chat. You've completed your two row repeat. That is your two row repeat and doesn't it look divine already altogether we have three rows however because the first row didn't actually count as a repeat row yeah but these last two rows that you just did they are your repeat rows all the way through your piece for the rest of your jumper that's it except when we um, do the mixed pattern design which we'll do one of those in the very next tutorial yeah but for now this is it that is all you need to know for this tutorial however what i want you to do is you know fix up your yarn flip your work and everything all right now let's say that everything is all correct here yeah you want to grab your sewing weaving darning needle now don't worry about my disheveled mess here <laughs> let's try the pink because it's nice and light you want to grab the tail end of your pink. Now, for those of you who are new to crochet, my opinion would be to finish this whole row of colors, your whole sets, until you get to the end of your set. Uh, my opinion would be to do that and then weave this yarn in. Because if you find that you didn't like the color that you like, this is going to be hard to come undone because yours truly is a bad, bad girl and likes to <laughs> split yarn when she weaves in her ends. Talking about myself in the third tense, and I do apologise there to those of you who are liter literally <laughs> listening to me. All right, so here's your pink thread. Yeah, This is the wrong side of your work. Another reason to leave your tails here is to remind you which is your wrong side, which is your right side. But you'll be able to tell later because look what happens on the wrong side you have a little loop that sits there in every color you have a little loop on the right side you don't see any loops all right your loop is there and you won't see it it'll tighten up you want to grab your needle and just weave your ends through now you can just put you through the stitch if you like like that or you can do a naughty like me and let's make that a little bit longer uh, and split some yarn. I'm going to split some yarn. It's not exactly in the stitch. It's The stitch has been split. No one's going to see it. It's on the inside. And by splitting, what happens is, which is an absolute no-no, is that's going to be hard to take undone later. So make sure everything is correct. So when you've been seeing my piece, make sure you can't see the needle from the front, by the way. When you've been seeing my piece for the past uh, month or so, you've been seeing tails attached. I don't weave the ends in for this kind of, it's called graph ganning, for this kind of work until I'm completely sure. So we're going to go back the other way, splitting in a different section and just going through what you just did in different sections, of course, check your front, make sure you can't see that needle. And that pink yarn 
initially is done. But yours truly is an absolute stickler. So she's going to do it one more time. <laughs> Still talking about myself in the third tense. I do apologise. All right, so there we go. Now you can't see the needle. Good. After this third time, I literally cut my yarn. Now you will find that you may see mine that aren't weaved in because once again, I will do it at the end. But you, if you, if you are worried about having to hold that tail, right, then it's gone. The only time you need to hold your work is when you're working with the threads. So you get the pink, you start your pink, you go all the way over, you need to hold your, your uh, grey up or your pink in your hand, but not your tail because you've weaved your tail in. All right, so I only got you to hold two threads, which was the pink and the tail of the pink because you had two threads. But if you weave in these little tails, you won't need to hold it anymore. You'll just need to hold one thread. So I'm hoping this is helping you. Now I've messed up, turned this around about 10 times. So I've messed up my threads and you don't need to do that. And another reason it's a good idea to wait until the end of your rows to do the tails is because then this doesn't happen. <laughs> so I'm gonna spend a few minutes detangling. But in the meantime, guess what we're going to do? We're going to talk about what you're going to do next. All right, now this is pretty simple, okay? What, what's going to happen now is you're going to repeat these two rows. What's well, not simple? <laughs> you're going to repeat these two rows, the difficult row and the next row, until you reach the end of your set. How many do you need to do in your set? I hear you ask. Check it out right here. All right, so I know for a fact I need to do 10 rows, but in your color combinations and your sizes, these are the amount of rows that you need to do all together. So I need to actually only do seven more rounds. I'm sorry, let's try rows. Seven more rows, but you need to do the amount of rows you need to do for your piece. I've done three, I need to do seven more, so I need 10 all together. So have a look at your size, check it out, that is the amount of rows that you're going to need to complete to finish this set. All right, so head off on your own. I'm not going to let you finish up today. We're, we're coming back again in about, I don't know, for me it'll be a few seconds. For you it'll be however long it takes you to do seven rows or eight rows or how many rows that you need to do. Meet me back here in a moment and we'll talk about changing to the very next set of colors all right head off on your own do these rows that you need to do and i'll meet you back here once you're done all righty guys isn't this exciting what you should have is that now everyone should be on i'll explain it to you your last side should have been the wrong side. And again, how can you tell the wrong side? You will have these lines coming up here. And we completed the last side on the wrong side. Then I want you to flip your work. Everyone will be starting, this is all sizes, on the right side of your work for your very next colour. Because I've done it in rows where they are even. So let's say for argument's sake, you've messed up your count and you don't know how many rows you've done. We are going to be able to count them. Very simple. See these ridged rows? Yeah, that's one side of your work. And the little indented rows, once again, is another side of your work. So I actually count by twos. If you want to go by one, you can go indent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I have ten rows. Everyone should have ten rows except for five extra large. You guys should have twelve rows. Okay, so that is going to be your repeat rows all the way through the piece of your jumper, just for the fronts and the backs of your work. Your sleeves will probably be a little bit different, but for now, this is what you should do. 10 in every set, or for the extra, five extra large, 12 in every set, all right? So let's start off by getting ready to change to the very next color. Now the very next color I'm using, I believe is the blue, or what is it really called? I haven't got the name on it. Aquarium, that's the one. <laughs> I had to think about the name. All right. 
So, grabbing your next colour, getting it ready. You don't need it right now, not this very second, because we need to finish off this section. Now, turn your piece, making sure that everything is detangled. Well, you actually have to detangle it once you turn. Oh, hang on. I've already turned it. Excuse me, I was right the first time. Turn your piece. But before you do, let's pretend that we haven't finished. Let's move everything out the way so you can see. Let's pretend that we haven't finished our last stitch. So take undone your last half double crochet of the row. You're going to start your half double crochet in the stitch like normal, pull the loop through, hold it there. Just grab your red, pop it at the back, grab your new color, which in my case is the aquarium or blue. Pull that loop through like so. And as you'd been doing in the past when you first started your colours, hold your tails in your hand and get rid of all the hair, yeah? And just chain one like so. Turn your work. You can fix it all up in a minute, but this is how I want you to start the first two stitches. Yarn over your hook into that first stitch that you're in, yes? and do one half double crochet. Popping your stitch marker in the stitch. Top two loops like so. And I'm not sure if I split that, but we'll find out later. And then half double crochet right in the very next stitch. Absolutely simple. Now the best part about doing um, your color change on the even side, there's two best parts. One, it looks better, because if you look at the other side, you have a different, and I'll show you later. And the other thing is it's easier to change the colours. Okay, it's falling off the table. All right, so the idea is to continue along all the stitches as you would any other row, except you're using the blue or whatever colour you're using. Don't forget if you are wanting to show us pictures of what you are doing on how you're going instagram is the best place to do that you can hashtag wow crochet designs that's all one word okay and we will see your uh, color combinations because we love to look at everyone's colors it's very exciting even if they're the same as ours yeah all right when you've done your stitches across where you still have one stitch left yarn over pop your hook in that stitch like normal pull it through like normal instead this time you're grabbing your new color now if you're anything like me your new color will be the green so my green is still attached what I want you to do is grab your scissors give yourself a long enough tail to weave in later we're not doing that now cut your green and then use your green for your very next piece an actual fact you probably could have cut all your pieces in fact I'm going to do that now you don't you probably would have been better off cutting them before but give yourself long tails to weave in and if you're not really worried about long tails then you know that's fine but really long tails are important I'm going to cut the red now the red I didn't cut it before because we needed it to attach the blue right but I'm going to give myself you know enough tail not too much just enough so do that now I should have probably done it before but anyway there you go all right so now we've got our blue started oh, let's bring this up again a little bit more our blue is started what do we do normally pop your work your tail other end let's try that again pop your tail in the back of your hand grabbing your green okay and just pulling it through with the green, like so. Holding the tail of your green and your blue in your other hand, like so. Yarn over your hook into the first stitch. Don't mind my little puppy, I'm not making a little bit of noise out there. Gets a bit excited sometimes. Um, he's not a puppy, he's, he's an old fella. <laughs> he's a very old fella. I'd say he's at least. 15, 16, maybe even 17 years. We don't know. He was a rescue dog, so we're kind of just guessing at this stage. But he will bark on the odd occasion now because he doesn't see anymore. And that's his way of communicating. <laughs> don't you love it? 
I got a bit sidetracked there. All right, so continue your green all the way across. Come on, Mary, keep going. All the way across. And my green is caught, which is why I'm struggling. There we go. Get to your very next colour. And you're one stitch away from your next colour. There. All right. Now, my suggestion would also be to count these stitches. Really, really important for this row. It's important for every row, but even more so for this row, because if you mess up this row and you decide later you want to weave these ends in, they're not going to come out, yeah? <laughs> All right, so finishing off your last stitch by starting it, like so, grabbing your next colour. Not sure what you're using, but I'm using the koala or the brown, if you will. I'm going to have to give that another tug because it got caught up a minute ago. Oh, here we go. That's all right. Come on, Mary, you can do this. All right, once again, you are popping the green in the back of your hand, grabbing the brown, and bring that down, grabbing the brown, and pulling it through. Now, you're grabbing the tail. Notice I had a shorter tail, so I'm pulling it a bit to make it longer. Grab the tail of your brown and your green, holding them at the back just for the first stitch like that and drop them. I drop them halfway through the stitch. Okay, if you want to hang on to them right all the way through the stitch, you can, but I too do tend to drop them halfway through. And now let's just go pretty fast across this way to get to your very next color. I think you know what you're doing, but I still want to show you this row and the next row as well. This is pretty much, these two rows that we're doing now is pretty much, pretty much exactly the way we did the first two rows here. Oops, I got a bit silent there, sorry guys. <laughs> I got distracted with work. All right, we're on our second last stitch, which is right there. Oh no, we'll finish it off. Yeah, yarn over your hook, start your next color, your next stitch with your last color and grab your new color. Mine being <laughs> on the top of the thing there. <laughs> I had to find it and drop it. Oh, you didn't see that, it was on top of my stand. Pop your color over, pulling it through like so. And once again, what are you doing? Holding everything in the back of your hands and starting your very next set. Super easy, yeah? Super easy. I'm gonna pop this on faster, we get to our next color and off we go. It's a good thing I put that on on fast because I think I messed up every second second stitch. <laughs> every second stitch. All right, so we're going to start our very last set of colors. The next color I'm using is the pink. Okay, now again, guys, you can use whatever colors you like. Not necessary for you to use the same as me, yeah? Play around with color. If you've got more than six seven colors in your stash use them all play with them all so you're grabbing both the ends at the back nothing's changed everything's the same for this row and off you go the importance of this row is to make sure you have the same amount of stitches per color as you did in your previous row except obviously with the different colors yeah second last stitch I'll get a nice close-up for everyone so you can see this part very easy part anyway you've been doing this all along there's nothing different at the beginning and the end of each rows except when you're changing your color yeah so chain one take out your stitch marker 
if you can get it out. <laughs> I need a stitch marker. Pull it up. Actually, you know what? We'll pop it in there so that we can do this part because this part's a lot of messing around. All right. So let's say for argument's sake, you flipped your work and you still have some yarn attached. I don't know where you would have your yarn attached, but you may still have your yarn attached. The other ones, these colours here. You might have the brown attached still. You might have the green. You might have the pink. You might have the grey. Make sure you cut them. Ah, see? My grey is still attached. All right. So we're going to cut the grey, giving myself a long tail. Yeah. Move all the yarns that you're not using out the way. It's only going to tangle everything up. Yeah. For the rest of the piece, you need to make sure you have sorted your yarns out. So the pink will start first. The brown will go second, the green will go third, and actually that's tied up with the brown. And I've still got some grey attached in there as well. So make sure you detangle before you start. If you're using bobbins, go you. <laughs> that's all I want to say, go you. But make sure you detangle everything before you start your very next row, which is now. And guess what? The row that we're going to do now is exactly the same as the second row we did in the beginning. So I'm going to show you again because, you know, it can be tricky and you might have forgotten. So, once you've turned your work around, come on, <laughs> you've turned your work around and you're going to start your row like normal with a half double crochet. Like that. And I'm going to pop this on fast till we get to the end of the pink. Alrighty, I'm on my second last stitch. I'm about to start that last stitch. Now you have a lot of threads here. So you've got to be very weary here, yeah? Well, not too weary, but, you know, start your stitch like normal. Grabbing your pink, passing it forward. Grabbing the tail of your pink, passing it forward and holding on. You may have loosened it a little bit. Just tighten it up. Just leaving your brown down. Now, if the brown is bothering you, I would actually pop the brown in that hand as well, yeah? Or whatever color you've got there then you pick up this orangey color dark orange color and you pull it through like so notice how I'm holding the work at all times when I'm doing that stitch and to do the next stitch once again you're going to pop it under the brown loop into the stitch I'm sorry let's try orange <laughs> into the stitch pull a loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops and there you go and that's the right side of your work this is the wrong side where you have all your tails. All right. Again, a very tricky um, maneuver, <laughs> if you will. But we're going to do it again in a minute. I'm going to pop this on fast till we get to the end of this orange color. And off we go. Second last stitch right there. Now this color can also be a, like a, it can be a, like a light brown. It's called pumpkin spice. And we've used the eight ply in Bendigo Woolen Mills pumpkin spice for our temperature blanket last year. Yeah. So yarn over our hook into the very next stitch, start it. So I find it easier just to grab all of the tail ends first. So the tail ends Oops, of everything. All right, that's the tail end of that. Now that's loosened up. Look how loose that is. So what I want you to do, if yours is loosened up, tighten it a bit. You're going to be passing it forward anyway, so that will tighten it up. And you're holding everything there except the colour you're going to use to actually crochet the next stitch. So yarn over your hook, holding everything still. Pull the loop through, holding it again. Yarn over, under the loop into the stitch very fiddly stitch right now and pulling your loop through all of it 
Yeah, bit tricky, but we've done it. You've done it many times before. It's just now you've got all these tail ends attached. And that's that. I'm just got, my yarn just got entangled up for some reason. It got caught up in the skein, actually. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so your job again. We're going to pop this on fast and get to our very next colour. And off we go. Oh, that's the second last colour. Oh, I got a bit sidetracked. You know when you're sort of working away and you forget? Um, start your next colour, pull a loop through. Remember, grabbing the tail ends of everything. This is just for this row. After this row, the rest will be easy, yeah? Grab your working end, passing it forward, holding everything, grabbing your new colour. Now I've pulled that too tight because my yarn got caught, but don't be, don't be pulling them too tight, yeah? Pull the loop through, yarn over, under your green loop, into your green stitch. Pull it through all of those loops and then pull it through the three loops on your hook and off you go. All right, once again, you have that look. Remembering this is the wrong side of your work still. So there you go. All right. So what we're going to do once again, I'm going to pop this on fast until we get to the very last colour of this section for us um, and the others you need to do your next two or three sections, one or two sections, sorry, off we go. Here we are in a second last stitch. You may have noticed that halfway through the stitch, I had a big lump, like a chunk of yarn. I pulled that chunk of yarn off a little bit and then twisted my yarn and then continued the work. And you don't get that big thick. Sometimes that's no good because that actually rips your yarn. So be careful of that. That's a little trick I might show you one day. But for now, let's just keep going. Pop your hook. Oh, hello, we're so far away. Popping your hook in your last stitch pull a loop through passing everything forward again once again i'm going to grab all the tails because i find that a lot easier to work with then i'll grab the green pass that forward then i'll pick up my blue yarn over the hook pull it through like so and i think i've pulled some yarn so i'm gonna to have to look at that i've pulled that little thread there i'll just do it again Pick up my blue, grabbing the loop and pulling it through like normal, yarn over, popping it under the blue, into the stitch, and guess what? That's it. Let's go on fast one more time. I'm on my second last stitch. Let's bring everything up again. And into the last stitch with your stitch marker. With your very last piece. And what do we do at the end? We do a chain. Popping your stitch marker in the chain for this piece now. Because we are going to have a little chat. All right. So what you have is that. That's the wrong side of your work. Keep it this side. We're going to work on something in a minute. But I just wanted to show you the right side. Oh, actually, you can probably have a look at your right side as well. This is how smooth the colour change is. I mean, how gorgeous is that? If your colour change is way over here or way over there, then you've messed up some stitches. The idea now is to count every stitch in every set Make sure you have the amounts that you are supposed to have. And there's the amounts again up on the screen. Make sure you have those amounts. Um, and then we will continue 
to do the very next um, part of this tutorial. Now this part of the tutorial is going to be the final part of this tutorial. I know this has gone a long time guys, but I really did want to be thorough in color change. So what I'm going to do now is flip the work again or keep it on the side that you have it on. Now your job is to, once you've counted everything and everything's perfect, to weave in every end you see here. All right, so let's start. You'll have your pink weave in this way under your brown or across, or you might even bring the pink down to this row and weave it under there. Or you might want to weave it across there. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. And the same with the brown, you weave that in. Then once you've weaved in all your ends, you flip your work and you continue to do this set until you get to your very next set. Alrighty guys, so thank you very much for joining us today for part three of our patchwork jumper slash sweater. <laughs> Don't forget, you guys need to weave in all your ends, continue your rows. I'll leave the information for the amount of rows that you need all together for your sets. You should already have that, but I will leave that at the end of this tutorial as well. And join us on Monday for part four where you will get to do this one right here along with some other sets as well. All right. Don't forget also to join us Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. Melbourne, Australia time, Wednesday afternoons, 4 p.m. Melbourne, Australia time, where we have our lives and we have a lot of fun on our lives. We talk about our sweater. We talk about future projects. We have a bit of crochet fun as well, which we haven't for a while, but we're going to do that very soon. Um, so we do a little bit of live crochet as well. All right. Thank you for joining us and I'll see everyone on Monday for part four. Oh, ciao for now.